Welcome everyone! In this video I will show you how to debug your arrays or lists into one line inside the console so the debugging will be a lot cleaner and readable. We will be using also some advanced techniques like link syntax or lambda expressions, so I hope you will like this video. So let's get started. In our scene we have one game object with the name collections with the collections component attached. So let's open the collection script and inside we have two basic classes. First is person, second is animal. Both of them have different properties. Then finally we have a collection class which is basically mono behavior and inside we have array of our persons with the name people and a list of our animals with the name pets. And now inside the inspector I already filled these variables with some values so we can test our debugging. Now first let's do it in an old way. So let's create a new method called debug collection and let's create for each loop where we will be looping our person inside a people array and let's write a debug log. And for example, we want to see a name. So let's add person.name as a parameter and to test it inside the inspector without going to play mode, we just need to create an attribute with the name context menu and let's put debug collection as a name. Now inside editor, let's select our collections and let's open the component menu and let's click on the debug collection and we can see the results inside the console on each separate line, which we don't like. So let's fix it. Let's delete our for each loop and let's write debug log and inside let's write string.join and this method will join multiple strings with some separator and our separator will be comma and now we need to collect our strings and the easy way is to use a link namespace and the link allow us to use query syntax inside our c -sharp code and it is similar syntax which is used inside a databases. So now we can write our link query and it will be from person in people and we want to select the person.name. Now let's test it. And now finally we can see the result into one line which is exactly what we wanted. Now let's go back to our collection class and I will show you how to change this query syntax to a method syntax with the use of something different which is called a lambda expression. So first let's copy the beginning of our debug log and let's write people.select and our lambda expression will be i lambda operator i dot name and we can read this lambda operator as for each element i inside a people we want to select i dot name. Now let's test it and we can see we are getting the same exact debug log. And now to reuse this method inside a different project, we can create a new class with the name custom debug. Let's clean it, let's delete the mono behavior because this will not be a component and let's write the public void debug collection method and let's put our person array with the name my list as a parameter. Now from our collection script, let's copy our debug log line and let's paste it inside our new method. First, we need to change our people array to be my list, and then we need to add the link namespace, so everything will work. And now back inside our collection, let's replace the debug log line with our custom debug, and we want to reference our method, but we forget to make it a static one. So let's add the static modifier, and now we can access it directly, and let's put our people into the parameter, and now we can test it, and we can see it's working exactly like before. Now let's go back to our custom debug script. And we can see we are always selecting the name from our list, but usually we want to define what we want to select. And luckily, when we are using the Lambda expression inside our method, we can put it directly inside the parameter. And what we need to use is a delegate, a special one with the name func, which can define input and output parameters. And in our case, input type will be person and output type will be string and the name will be data to show. Now to use this delegate, we need to add system namespace and now we can modify our Lambda expression. So instead i.name, let's write data to show and let's put i as a parameter. Now let's go back to our collection script and at the end to our debug collection, Let's add our lambda expression and in this case we want to show the age of our people and we need a string so let's add two string. Now let's test it 
and we can see it is working. Now we can optimize it even more because we don't want to write always the two string. So let's delete it and let's go to our custom debug. And here, instead of the string input, we want to add some generic parameter. So the parameter can be int, bool, or anything else. So let's define generic p parameter into our method. And also let's replace our string with our parameter p. And now inside our collection, we don't have any error. So we can test it. And we can see it's working exactly how we want. But we still have a problem. Our method is only accepting the person type, but we can have array of different types. So let's go back to our custom debug and let's change our person array to generic type with the name T. And let's also add it to our debug collection types and also to our delegate. Now let's go back to our collection script and let's try to put pets into our debugging. And we can see we are getting error. And the problem is, even we fix the array types to be generic, we didn't include a list type to our function, so we can't debugging the list. So to fix it, let's change our generic t array with the i enumerable t. And now we can see we can debug our pets without error. So let's try it. And as expected, is it working? Now, big advantage of a Lambda expression is that we can add more parameters. And for example, when we want to see the name of the pet and also the age of it, we can just write string.concat and let's put i.name as a first parameter, string colon with a space as a second, and i.age as a third. Let's test it. And we can see we have nice name of our pets with the age into the one line. Now let's add one more option into our debugging. And first let's change our pets with the people and let's go to our custom debug script. And what we want to add is an option to show only the result which met some condition. And to do it in front of our select, we will add a where statement and inside we will add another Lambda expression. And for example, we want to check items only where the age is more or equal to 30. So let's write T Lambda operator T dot age is more or equal to 30. But we can see we have an error because we are using a generic parameter. So we don't know if the age is a variable. So again, let's put this second lambda statement as a parameter. So let's write func with a t as a first generic type. And let's put bool as a second because it is expecting a boolean output and the name will be a condition. And now let's modify our second lambda expression with our condition. And let's put the t into the parameter. Now let's go back to our collections and let's duplicate the line. And we first want to show a name. So let's replace the old lambda with i.name and let's add our second lambda, which will be condition. So let's write i lambda operator and we want to show only the names where the age is more or equals to 30. But now we can see our first custom debug has an error because we didn't specify the condition, but sometimes we don't want any condition. We just want to display all the data. So to fix it, let's go back to our custom debug script and let's duplicate the whole method. So we will be overloading it and let's delete the last condition parameter and also replace our old debug log statement with a debug collection. And let's put my list as a first parameter data to show as a second. And for the condition, we just create new Lambda expression, which will be T Lambda operator and true. So that means our condition will always be true and we don't need to specify it. Now back to our collection script, we can see we don't have any errors, so we can test it. And now we are getting two debug logs. And first one is without condition where we are showing the names and the ages and the second debug log where we are showing only the names where the age is more or equals to 30. So that's basically everything for this video. 
Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.